Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the new Paradigm Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hi, I'm Whit Watson with a Golf Central update. Scotty Scheffler, the heavy favorite this week at the AT&T Byron Nelson, is going to go late early in the first two days, starting Thursday at 1.44 p.m. Eastern Time with two-time defending champion K.H. Lee and Jason Day. George Savarikas brings us more from Texas. Whit, he's a star atop the marquee here at the AT&T Byron Nelson. It's world number two, Scotty Scheffler, the highest-ranked player in the field, and he's the main draw this week at TPC Craig Ranch. Caught up with Scotty earlier to talk about the state of his game, the connection to the event here at the AT&T Byron Nelson, and how impactful it was to take a break after the RBC Heritage. Yeah, it was good. I, I tend to get pretty tired after the majors, and so um, having that little bit of a break was, was nice once Hilton Head get, got done. And it was a busy start to the year, and so it was a good, good little reset. What went into the decision to take last week off and have this on the, on the schedule? Yeah, so I, I want to support the events that are close to home. You know, the Byron means a lot to me. They gave, they gave me a spot when I was in high school here at this tournament, and so it's important for me to come back here and play. And yeah, that was, that was pretty much the decision. <laughs> Since first playing here back in 2014, and I remember talking to you that week when you were 17 year old teeing it up here. What's it like now growing into where you're the headliner, you're the highest ranked player in the field, and you're the local guy? Yeah, it's interesting, and it's definitely a lot of fun playing in front of the home crowds. And um, yeah, I don't really know how to describe it. I remember playing here in high school, and it felt like a like a really big deal and at the time it was and it's still a big deal for me to come here and show up and play and so I'm excited to be here and uh, looking for a good week. Looking at your results on the PGA Tour since the Worldwide Technology Championship at Mayakoba, you've had 11 starts, top 12 or better each and every single time. When you hear those numbers and that level of consistency, what comes to mind? Well, I'm, I'm glad that I've shown some consistency. That's what I think I'm searching for always as a player. And when we're practicing and working on stuff, I'm trying to get more consistent. And so to have those results is good. And I'm fortunate to have a couple wins as well. And so all I'm doing is just trying to keep putting myself in a good position and see what happens. Last year at this point in the season, you had four wins in a major. You ended the season four wins in a major, but PGA Tour Player of the Year. You already have a couple wins now. What can you draw on from last year as you try and play your best golf at this point of the season going forward? Yeah, uh, trying to manage my energy levels. I think that's why I took a bit of a break, um, had a nice you know, few weeks off, just because the season's a grind. And now, especially with the tournaments, having so many good players, it feels like you're playing a major almost every week you show up. And so it's a little bit of a different feeling, but as a player, it's a lot of fun getting to pe compete against the best guys pretty much or nearly every time we tee it up. Final question. I remember talking to 17-year-old Scotty Scheffler. He didn't quite have the beard. Uh, yeah, I got a little lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you told him, that, hey, nine years from now, you're going to have six wins, a major, be world number two. What would you think of the journey? Yeah, it's been a pretty wild ride. Um, if you would have told me that back then, I probably would have told you you're crazy. You know, I was just I was just a high school kid. I was just trying to play some good golf, and I didn't really know where it would take me. I was just I always liked practicing and playing, and so um, it was just something that I did. And so golf's treated me well for a long time, and I'm very blessed to be out here. And, yeah, looking forward to this week. With how much success Scotty's had on the PGA Tour, it's surprising in his hometown event. We've never seen him post a top 10 finish, but you wonder with his recent form if that'll change this week at TPC Craig Ranch. Well, since 1970, only four Texans have won the AT&T Byron Nelson. Scott Verplank, the most recent in 2007, joining Ben Crenshaw, Billy Ray Brown, and Bruce Litsky, who won it twice, 1981-1988. In fact, nine of the last 14 tournaments have been won by non-Americans. Upper Montclair Country Club in New Jersey hosting the Cognizant Founders Cup for the second time. The event began in 2011 as a way to honor the LPGA Tour's 13 founding members. Quickly has become one of the most important non-majors on the schedule for women. In 2022, the LPGA saw its largest purses and winner's checks in the history of the tour. Keeping that momentum going is one of the primary tasks for Commissioner Molly Marcou Saman, who addressed a variety of topics with reporters earlier in the day, starting with a question about her meeting at the Chevron Championship with many of the heads of the sport's other governing bodies and what came out of that for the LPGA. First, we wanted to educate. You know, we wanted to sort of set the stage for where women's golf is 
where we've been, where we are currently, and where we think we can go, and intersect that with where women's sports are. So we brought in some experts from the industry, you know, at large, to be able to educate the golf lenders, and they're really committed to what we're doing. They're really committed to growing girls' golf collectively, and I think the idea was, let's bring all the people with the most power in the industry together, give them some education, and think innovatively about the future. What can we do structurally? What can we do to move um, our initiatives forward? And they're super engaged and super passionate about it, so I think it was a really big next step. Next step, because we've been doing it all along. They've all been dug in, but this is kind of that next iteration. When do you think we'll be able to see that some of the fruits of, of that meeting uh, out here on the LPGA Tour? I mean, I think, you know, again, it's a process, and already tons of ideas have been circulating, and I think now people are at a kind of level set on where we are, and so I think you'll see some change right away. I mean, I th I'm really optimistic about where we're going. Molly, on the PGA Tour, they have the Player Impact Fund for some of the bigger needle movers in the game. Has there been any thought to bringing something like that to the LPGA? Well, I think, um, you know, uh, not to comment specifically on some of the ideas, but we're really looking at how we can work collectively as a team. I mean, this is the players' tour, and so how can we... I, I looked out at our player meeting out in Arizona, and I looked out and saw the 150 best players in the world, and I just thought about the the collective power of we. You know, how can we all come together to elevate this? And so we're thinking of creative ideas. Um, I don't think the players need an incentive to grow the LPJ Tour. It's their tour. But how can we, more importantly, um, you know, kind of elevate them? You know, how can we use our sponsorships to give them more revenue opportunities? How can we think about giving them a more stable existence out here through our partnerships? You know, whether it's through, a, um, you know, minimum, minimum payouts for different events or stipends at different events. So they can get to the first tee ready to perform. And that's really some of the things we've been focusing on with our partnership team or what are the creative ways that we can make the lives of our players better to be able to use their platform more aggressively. Do you feel that the players are buying in fully to, uh, you know, elevating the tour? I think so. I mean, I think, listen, at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons why I love this job is because it's their tour. We work for them. We serve them. So any decision that we make is always to elevate the tour, and I think they, they see that. And so continuing to talk about it, continuing to get their feedback, continuing to bring the player directors, but also the players at large into what we do um, is really important for us moving forward. And, and they're passionate. I mean, I ask players for a meeting, and they're absolutely, what do you want to know? What do you want to hear? How can we work together? So it is their tour. There's obviously been a large influx of money into golf in general over the last few years. Has that changed your goal for growing purse sizes or partnerships or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important that we continue to grow at a faster clip even, you know, just because you don't want that divide to become bigger. It's like we want, we want to catch up. And so obviously we're, we're watching carefully and trying to figure out how we can, part of the commission's goals is how we can all come together and use some of that money that's being invested in the game to grow the women's game too. I mean, this is a team sport. I always say that, and like Seth Waugh will always say that, life is a team sport. Well, I think golf's a team sport, and we got to get everybody kind of rowing in the same direction. Molly, a few weeks ago at Chevron, some comments had come out from Greg Norman saying he was still very interested in the women's uh, side of the game. Have you heard anything from them more recently uh, about getting involved with the LPGA? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not positive of what he was referring to, but I think, as I've said before, it's always our responsibility to kind of listen and learn. And right now, we're really just focused on, on what we're doing and focused on we're really bullish about where we're going. So that's kind of where we are right now. So nothing new to report.